Uh, we're going to talk about one athletes unlimited. Uh, that's a new league starting up. Um, I'm going to hold off on explaining it because I think between Jordan, Faluka, and Molly, they'll, they'll do a much better job. Um, but Faluka Gunderson, right, recently married. Um, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave, I know I'm going to leave out some stats, but you played at Stanford. You were played in three finals. Uh, there, you're a two-time Olympic medalist. Molly, you played at Texas. You're a 2012 national championship or champion. In 2008, uh, your team, the Pan, you won the Pan American Cup. And you're a three-time All-American. Uh, Jordan Larson played at Nebraska, two-time Olympic medalist, and 2006 national champion. I know you guys have a lot more on your resume, but I just wanted to spotlight some, some pretty major events. Um, first off, can you guys tell me what, what is going on? What is this new league that's starting off and what each of your roles is? Um. I can take a crack at this. Um, yeah, Jordan was the one who explained it to me first. Yeah. You're good. You got it. You got it, girl. Okay. Um, yeah. So I got a text from Jordan um, about a couple months ago, and she was like, hey, would you be interested in playing in the U.S. if there was a league here? Um, which is like a dream come true, right? So, um, yeah, starting in February, um, we are launching a league with Athletes Unlimited. They already have softball. Um, it is very, it's a different take on volleyball. So we're going to spin the rules a little bit. It's going to be very individually focused and, um, athlete driven. So the athletes are the decision makers in this role. It isn't going to be, you know, a single manager that's, um, dictating the whole league. Us as athletes will have decisions to make, um, with each week, how the uniforms look, how recruiting looks. And um, it lasts six weeks, so it's different than a typical season, which lasts anywhere from two months to 10 months. Um, and, and yeah, that's all I have right now. What, what about, what do you guys think, Jordan and Luca? Yeah, there's um, 48 players that are gonna be on the team. Um, like Molly said, we um, choose a different rotation like there's different teams each week which is very unique because usually when we're playing overseas we're on the exact same um, team for months on end so if, each week it's going to be a new set of players so um, but because it's individually focused but still you get points for um, set wins so you still really want to win and that's how you get your most bonus points um, but yeah just a different way of looking at the game of volleyball very fast paced and um, and finally, to be able to play in the States is amazing because we're having to leave um, our country and go overseas to make a living. And so finally, we have the option of staying home and doing that. Yeah, I think those two summarized it well. And we are all part of like the advisory board. So we get to, sorry, my dog is really loud. Uh, we get to uh, just make a lot of those decisions behind the closed doors and like talk about like sponsors. He's so loud. I'm going to move him. I'll be right back in two seconds. Um, I can explain. So um, the three of us are on the, the volleyball advisory board. So um, we'll handle things in terms of logistics, and recruiting, um, you know, how the rules will play out for each position, um, how we'll determine the scoring system. So um, right now it's us three. And so we're looking into obviously expanding to, or expanding the league and getting, you know, the, the 48 players in this, in this American league. Um, and then Jordan and Karch are on the Athletes Unlimited Advisory Board. So that's um, the whole entire corporation. So right now, Athletes Unlimited has softball. They're launching in August. Um, and then obviously volleyball, but they're looking to expand into men's volleyball um, and other sports as well. So that's why you'll see different athletes from different sports on that advisory board. So they'll kind of spearhead um, professional sports in America. That's awesome. So that's kind of set off to take off in February of 2021, correct? And then right now to start off, it's the, the rosters are going to be hand selected, right? And then hopefully the goal is it gets big enough that girls are able to try out. Is that the goal or, you know, as we kind of run through this pilot? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's um, that's the goal. We're having meetings all the time about um, recruiting and stuff. But if we have a lot of interest, you know, I hope then we'll have girls, um, yeah, try out and expand the league. Of course, you know, we want it to be very like a huge opportunity for girls coming out of college. You know, that's something that we would have liked coming out of college. Um, you know, back whenever we were graduating. So now we'll be able to have that conversation. Um, and keep it in the U.S. without having to contact an agent and figure out, you know, foreign contracts and such. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the goals is like to get like foreign players in and just really try to expand it. I think I think the times that have failed in the past is like we try to compete with all these clubs that have been in in the works like in Europe for like fifty plus years. And so I think the fact that we're kind of reinventing the wheel a little bit, like trying to do. Um, they did some research on like a lot of people want to follow players and not necessarily teams. So that's why you're seeing like this change, you know, this fantasy type deal is because people want to follow, yeah, obviously players. So, um, I think it's a good way to start out. And I think obviously we're, our hope is to continue to expand and to grow that, um, yeah, from there. So I think at first I was like, what is this? Uh, what are you, what are we doing? This isn't volleyball, you know, but uh, the more I've like thought about it, I think it's like so unique and so cool. And uh, I'm just really excited for like you guys, right? Like you guys are the future and like to have this opportunity, like is so great for all of you. And um, I'm sad that I'm <laughs> getting on the tail end of it, but uh, it's going to be great for you guys. Yeah, that's exciting. So we, I know, you know, speaking for all the girls, if they could talk right now, they're saying, they're going to, definitely looking forward for this to take off. There's some pretty big names behind it, too. I think you guys had Kevin Duran has a hand in this. Abby Wambot has a hand, at least in the advisory board. I know you guys mentioned Karch, so that's that's pretty exciting. Um, I want to start off, kind of first question for you guys. Um, when, did, when did you guys start playing the game, and what was your career path like, high school slash club to college to the professional level? Sure, I'll start. Um, so I played basketball and I ran track growing up, um, up until, or through high school actually. Um, and volleyball didn't come into my life until my sophomore year in high school. My high school volleyball coach kept nagging me to play for my freshman year. And I was like, I don't do volleyball. It's just not, not my thing. So I thought. And um, just to get her off my back, I decided to try out my sophomore year. And I was, because I didn't, respect the sport because I was like I'm a real athlete I play basketball like I know I know sports and then I I went to the first practice of tryouts and I was so sore and I remember telling my mom like I don't know if I can do this you know and so I decided to give it the week at least throughout through the tryouts um just to see if I liked it and it was so challenging and the team aspect of it and just the challenge to grow as a player really drew me to the game. And so I kept playing, but I didn't play club volleyball because um, I still played basketball and ran track and track and field was during club season. So I didn't do it, but I did the youth and junior national teams. I tried out for that and made those teams purely based on athletic ability, zero based on actual volleyball skill as Jordan can attest to. Um, <laughs> and then I uh, decided to play at Stanford. Um, and then, yeah, everything, my career's kind of been like one thing's led to another and I've just been really blessed. Um, I worked hard for it, but uh, definitely things have fallen into place. And so then I played uh, Stanford, then went to the national team. I've played professionally for a decade now and yeah, two Olympic games, here I am. <laughs> Jordan, you got it. All right. Uh, well, mine's a little bit different than hers. I've been playing volleyball most of my life. Uh, it's kind of all I've known. Uh, no, I, I kind of was a pretty athletic kid, so my mom just kind of threw me into a lot. So I started out with soccer, softball, played basketball. I ran track through high school, um, but volleyball, I started playing club when I was 12, and that's really kind of where it started for me. I sat down with my parents and kind of set three goals because, as you know, club is financially a lot, and so it kind of became my job in a sense. Is that how my parents phrased it? And so I sat down with them and set three major goals. I wanted to play in varsity. I wanted to go to uh, college and play, and I wanted to be an Olympian. And you can imagine at the age of 12, like people thought I was crazy, but I was more than confident and saw the vision, you know? And so 
uh, I ended up playing club and then went on to high school uh, like Luca I made the youth and junior as well that's how we became we weren't friends actually at that point but um yeah <laughs> you should have seen her pepper session uh, it was like one and done and that's it it wasn't there wasn't a pepper session um, and so uh, anyways uh, then I went on to college the University of Nebraska um, and then I knew I wanted to be an Olympian, but I didn't know what that took. So then I went on to play professionally and that was kind of a good first step and played in Puerto Rico, went on to Russia, played for Russia for five years, Turkey for five years, and now uh, China for two. So I've been playing just as long as Beluga has um, and then two, two Olympics. So it's been kind of like her, things have just kind of fallen into place for me. I've been very lucky uh, to have the right path and, and taken a great path, so. Real quick, fun fact. Jordan, I think I was driving through Nebraska one time. I was doing GMS camp a while ago. And I think I saw a billboard. I was passing your hometown, right? There's a billboard there, right? <laughs> yeah, there was. It was like they take it down. It's usually like right before the Olympics. They put it up. So, yeah, no, it's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I know you hometown in Nebraska, and then you went on to play college in Nebraska. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud of you over there. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I have a different path. Well, no, I started out young too. I played a bunch of sports growing up. It was, you know, swimming and dancing and basketball and anything just to get us out of the house as kids. Um, and so I, same thing kind of about playing basketball and the basketball coach was like, you should try something in the off season. So I tried volleyball and kind of hated it because I was so bad. I was, you know, I had no control. I was just awful. I begged my parents not to put me in club. You know, I, I tried, I tried the whole club volleyball thing and then refused to go to practice so many times, um, but then fell in love eventually. Um, and then I had a similar conversation with my mom. She was like, you know, do you want to continue this, go to college? You know, do you want to even win a national championship? Um, so that led me to Texas because they hadn't won one in a long time. So, um, and it was close to home. It was about three hours away from home. I'm from Houston. And so I went to Texas and, um, won a national championship my freshman year, got close the rest of the years. Um, sadly lost to Nebraska in the finals um, my senior year. And then um, afterwards I played in Germany for three years and then kind of um, had to make a decision based on like where my life was going. I had missed family so much and um, volleyball was a great path for me. I just felt like I needed to start a different career just to be closer to family and figure out the rest of my life. So I kind of, I retired and said, you know, I'll keep one foot in and coach and kind of, you know, spread the love of the game, but then also figure out, you know, maybe I'll like marketing. Sure. Um, and then, you know, a month ago, Jordan asked me to play or asked if I wanted to play again. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, I need to get back to training as soon as we can lift this whole COVID-19 thing. Um, I've just been playing fetch with my dog. So it'd be nice to hit a ball for once. Yeah. All right, Serena. Um, this is a question for Feluca and Molly. When you guys are first given the position as a middle blocker, um, did you guys embrace it or did you not really like it or did you have to like grow into it? Um. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, so I started, like I said, I started volleyball my sophomore year in high school and I didn't know anything and I didn't know any better. So they're like, you're going to be a middle blocker. And I said, okay, I didn't know what, <laughs> what it was. Um, and as you know, it's like, it's a really tough position. It's, uh, it's really physically taxing and demanding. Um, and I, I guess like at this point in my career, obviously you can't go back, but even if I could, I don't know if I necessarily would change things. I think I, it's something that I just take great pride in. And I know it's, you know, a workhorse position, but I'm proud to do that. And um, yeah, and just be as athletic as, and dynamic as possible and just embrace it. All right. Yeah, it was kind of like, sorry. No, my bad. I was, sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, it was kind of like, you're tall, so be in the middle. So I was, yeah, again, sure, um, I'll do that. And I've dabbled on the right side, it's just not my thing. Um, <laughs> but I think the middle, yeah, you don't get a lot of reward for you know working all the time, but um, I've been on great teams that reward like 
hey, thank you for selling that block. You know what I mean? Or like, thank you for driving up every single time. Like that part is rewarding. You don't necessarily like drive the points, but it's a good feeling to like provide for your team in different ways. That's a personal question. I think Serena, you were in the same boat, right? At one point. <laughs> Yeah, like I thought outside would be fun, thought right side would be fun, but it, it just wasn't in the cards, you know? I feel that. <laughs> uh, all three of you guys played and contributed in winning programs. What are some lessons that are still with you today? We'll start off with Jordan. Oh, man. Goodness. Um, I think just uh, probably discipline. Um, I think being a student athlete is really hard to balance and can be challenging at times and obviously like having social life, right? And so being able to think about all those things at one time, I think uh, going to college and going at to Nebraska helped me prioritize those things and, and what was really important for me. And so um, I'm thankful for that and for the structure of it. I think it was challenging, um, but I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, yeah, I think I'm most thank thankful for the community. It, like Jordan said, it was very difficult balancing all of that. In college, I felt like it was more difficult to balance, you know, school, a social life, volleyball, which was the main thing. And once you play overseas, there's, it's just volleyball, really. You know, you don't have a social life and you don't have school. So, um, like, in college, to balance all of that, you needed to lean on other people. Um, it was tough initially to ask for help. I wasn't very good at that, but then slowly but surely, like people are there, like ha their job is to help you. You know, your team is there to help you. Your, you know, academic counselors are there to help you, your coaches. You're given a community. I think that's helped me throughout the rest of my life that like whenever it gets especially hard and isolating, you know, there is always going to be community, especially within volleyball. You know, it's amazing that even now, we're isolated, but at least we have these Zoom calls and at least we have our teams to lean on and kind of not feel alone for all of this. Yeah, those are both great answers. I don't know if I have much to add, but um, like Jordan, I just love the structure. Um, I found for myself, I don't know if this answers your question, but academically it was always easier for me, oddly, during season because time management is huge. And I think, um, you know, I only had this amount of time to, to dedicate to studies and this amount of time for volleyball. But I think overall, like the lessons learned is being present and being focused on one thing at a time. So when I'm studying, my whole mind is in that. And when I'm on the court, my whole mind is in that. And I don't let the outside world like come into the court. So I push that aside and um, just focus on that. And I think that's served me well throughout my career of just um, dedicating your time into what you're doing and being present in those moments. And how do you guys hold yourself accountable when you're performing at the highest level? I think it's all about what your goals are and what your why is. And you have to remember, like, why, like, why am I doing this? I want to be the best in the world. I want to be the best middle blocker in the world. That's my goal. So how am I going to get there if I'm cutting corners? Like, that's impossible. You just can't do it. And so I think no matter what it is, um, everyone's goal is different. Everyone, everyone's why is different. And that's okay. Yours isn't going to look like everyone else's but if you can go back to that every single time and you, that's the only way you're going to hold yourself accountable how am I going to reach this goal is by giving my 110 percent every single time what she said yeah <laughs> yeah I, I agree yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know very well said I, mic drop all right so we'll move on then um the question, next question is, do you guys are clearly on that Athletes Unlimited board for a reason? People see you guys as leaders. How do you hold your teammates accountable? The governor, you take this one away. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I try to, like me personally, I try to set an example just by my actions. So whether that's 
being the first one to show up to practice, being the last one to walk out of practice, making sure, um, you know, talking to, you know, trying to create a relationship outside the court. Sometimes that's an area I struggle in is um, I'm just so business and so volleyball all the time that for me, like they, like there's, there's no like one or the other, they just really blend. And so I struggle in that capacity. Um, but I think just setting the standard by my actions and, and kind of, how I choose to live my life and um, just how hard I work. So I think um, that's just one way to do it. I think there's a lot of amazing leaders out there um, that I've played with um, that do a great job of communicating. And I not one to sit there and talk or like now I'm, this is really uncomfortable for me. Um, uh, so, but I know there's a lot of ways to lead through communicating and um, yeah, that's just what I do as an example. Um, yeah, I have had a decent amount of really good captains to play for, um, all of which led in a different way. Um, but I guess all of them served other people. So um, the good captains really that I've played with, they really get to know you, they build trust, they, you know, understand which buttons to push at which at which times. Um, the people that invest in, in you as a player, like, I guess that's how you hold your teammates accountable. It's just like building that platform of trust. Um, as a leader, I've tried to do that. And it can get, it can get really hard because you're not necessarily going to love every single buddy that you, every single person that you play with. Um, but on the court, that's really what matters. You know, I've had teams where we've absolutely, like, we didn't hang out, but then we've been incredibly successful because we just thought that you know the court was our business and we were going to get take care of that um and if you all just like come to that agreement then that's how you hold each other accountable that's a very good answer um when was the idea of having a growth mindset introduced to you guys and how did you get yourself to buy into it despite having setbacks Ooh. Um, I would say the first time I learned about uh, mindset would be, what year was that? With uh, 2009, was that right, Jordan? 2009, um, when Hugh McCutcheon had us read the book, Mindset. Um, oh. Yeah, and I loved it. And the thing is, I think a lot of us were, we had that mindset, right, already, but it was kind of reinforcing that. Um, but I love, I love the concept of that. And I think you can apply that as an athlete, me as a mom, um, how I want to raise my son. It's the same thing. Um, I think, you know, things, things aren't necessarily, you have to work for things. It's, and um, it's not just given to you. You're not just given this talent and that's it. Like, and, and you can just pack your bags because that's all you have going for you. If I work hard, if I have this goal and I work hard for it, I can get better. And that served me really well in my career. And I think it served me even better since reading that book. Um, and yeah, just continuing to grow and knowing that if I can't get there today, doesn't mean I won't get there tomorrow. Jordan? Uh, yeah, I mean, like her, I think a lot of us have that like trait in us um I don't know the one thing my mom I always go back to this she always talked about just being a sponge and I think that just goes back to like being a learner and having a growth mindset so I think I heard that a lot as a kid and so um I was never content uh I always was striving to be better and finding new ways to do something even that meant like asking a lot of questions and there are no stupid questions and um, I don't know, just always kind of pushing that button and pushing that envelope. And so I think, um, I don't know, I've, I've kind of heard that in a sense, just framed differently from such a young age. So, um, but I think learning about it more and kind of how it really impacts like a team dynamic um, more when we got to the national team and things like that. But um, I think it's, it's huge. And um when I get that question asked a lot about motivation, like what keeps, keeps you motivated? Like the fact that like we haven't mastered our craft yet, right? Like, okay, we've won all these things, yeah, to a certain degree, but we're not finished yet. And there's still a lot more to be answered and a lot more to be found. 
Molly? Oh, they both did a really good job answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's been a conversation with all the teams I've been on and mm. um, in a different way, of course, but like, I don't know, like being in the USA gym a couple summers ago, we really talked about it. Karch brought up like the lizard brain and, you know, um, how you can like adapt to the growth mindset and everything. And it's, it's just like the people that you think are masters of the, of the sport are constantly learning. You know, like Jordan said, like everybody's a student at all times. Like this is our class. This is our craft. Like there's always different ways to learn and a different way of looking at it. Um, and that is just incredibly just, just to stay curious is fulfilling, you know, just to keep on growing is why you kind of play the support, play the sport, you know? Yeah. Awesome. I, I think Karch does a pretty good job to uh, modeling that growth mindset. Um, I think that's important, you know, to, to be, you know, playing for someone and playing with teammates that, that, you know, make us strive to get better. Um, what's the biggest difference between playing college volleyball at the highest level and now playing on the national team, you know, best in the country versus best in the world. What's the biggest change you guys saw? Um, for me, honestly, I was like, oh, there's not that big of a jump. Like, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm, you know, won a national championship. Like, it's fine. Uh, you know, we'll, I'll roll in and I'll be, you know, great. Uh, it's much different, uh, a lot faster, um, more physical, um, and just mentally like hard. Uh, I remember my first summer on the national team, First or second, no, I think it was second year on the national team. We were playing Japan in China, uh, the, uh, Grand Prix finals, and we we're playing Japan. And Japan is like one of the teams that they like, like pick a person and they're going to serve you until the end of the match. And I was that person. And I remember coming off of set, like we're going into set four, and Karch at the time was an assistant coach. He's like, hey, Jordan, like, how are you doing? And I was like, like at that point, my eyes were crossed, had already like received like 30 serves and like just so exhausted. And that was not the end. We went five. And I think at the end of this, the game, I was, you know, 50 plus serves served at me. But being able to like stay in there mentally and be able to take serve after serve after serve was probably one of the most like challenging things mentally, not even, I mean, physically too, but um, just being able to expand your mind and, and, and that was, was definitely the hardest part. And I was not expecting that big of a jump from college to pro. You got it, Luca. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I would, I would agree with Jordan. The speed I think is the biggest thing that, that um, one could say, obviously you adapt as you, continue on your career like when you're in college like you and you watch a high school game like oh that's much slower right you get used to it but I think that was the biggest jump and then um also I don't know how to word this properly but I'd say like accountability in a sense like I thought I worked hard in college but to be at the best at my craft which I'm not even there yet but professionally it's a, like a whole nother gear so that's something I've had to address too as well. Yeah, I think in college, it's like, you know, once you have your spot, you know, more or less, it's, that's your spot and you can kind of get comfy in there um, professionally. And then, you know, on other teams, it's not, it's just not the same. Like if you, if you think that like you're in a good spot, like you're already in trouble, like, you don't really know the other team. You don't know your teammates because like one day they'll just show up and be absolutely amazing. And you have no idea where that came from. And then you're like, Oh crap, like I need to perform well. So um, it's just like constantly being uncomfortable is that was the biggest adjustment. Um, but once you understand that, like, that's why you're playing the sport, it's much more fun, you know? And that's, I think professional was almost freeing compared to college where I felt like, um, you know, I was just kind of not stuck, but I was, you know, in my position and we had, you know, certain goals and I didn't really have a ton of goals for myself. We had like very like team driven goals, which were great and they served me well, but then overseas, 
you know, you're changing teams every year and you need to prove yourself and have your own resume. Um, and that like players are constantly changing and getting better. And that whole mindset shift of like, oh, like I need to hold myself accountable every single day and every single game was a huge adjustment for me. And does that pressure of holding yourself accountable and knowing that your position is always at stake, does that ever go away? No, <laughs> I don't think it does. It shouldn't. I, you know, like that's how the best become the best is because the person behind them is also giving their best. Um, that like cutthroat mentality is terrifying, but also incredibly fulfilling. All right. Jordan, Faluka, do you guys want to expand on that? or your own um, memories of like high pressure situations? Yeah, I mean, I think Molly said it correctly. Like it's, it's intimidating at first, but I think that's what makes you like kind of get outside your comfort zone and, and find ways that you can be better. And so I think, yeah, she said it, she said it right. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, in the sport, in life, never getting comfortable where you are. I think that was perfect, Molly. Um, yeah, that's kind of been the same for us. I know Jordan and myself have been um, starters on the national team for a while now, but especially me now, I, I'm kind of starting from zero, just having uh, my son. So it's refreshing in a way, but even still, like when we were starters, it's not like it was given. Um, we were always working hard um, to keep that spot. And there's always someone that's coming for you. And, and like Molly said, that only makes you better and it makes your team better. All right, so we're gonna do a little, open up to a little bit Q&A. So go ahead and type your questions in the chat. Make sure everyone can see them and we'll call them. We'll unmute you guys and we'll let you ask your questions. Uh, while they're doing that, my question, I have a question for Jordan and Faluka. Uh, I've talked a lot to Joe Trinsley, Tom, Tom Black, obviously. Um, and they said one of the biggest changes is that when you guys won the world championship games, you guys had the best top spinners in the world. And then halfway through the tournament or leading up to the tournament, you guys decided to switch to float servers. And they, they really believe that that was the biggest change. Can you talk us through, you know, if you guys were a top spin server, how it was to switch once you became really good at that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was a top spin server, but I'm trying to remember if world champs, was it right after world champs? I don't I remember when. Or world huh? champs. I think, I think it was before world champs that you changed. But that I changed? Yeah. yeah. I think it was like maybe like during Grand Prix or something. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember. Anyways, the older I got, like, I just didn't have enough pace on it. I'm not like a Boscovich who's the opposite for Serbia that just can like overpower people. Mine was starting to get just slow and easy to, to zone six. So I was like, all right, it's time to like mix it up here. And so, yeah. And obviously like to receive a float serve is just much more, it's just a lot harder. And so um, I appreciated that challenge because I had never really float served in my life. It was only like kind of in passing. And so, uh, yeah, it was a cool challenge for me. Obviously at that point I was, sorry, what year was that? 2015 you said? 2015 we won? Portland. I think so, yeah. Uh, what does it matter? I was still like, uh, like had played enough volleyball that like change at that point in your career is like, pretty hard right but I, we when we talk about growth mindset like just being open to that um and I talked a lot about like Faluka I think you had the same and Molly too maybe when you came to the national team like you had done a skill right most of your career all the way through college and then I get to the national team and he was like oh we're gonna reach you Chad to pass I'm like excuse me like I feel like I'm a pretty good passer and here you are like changing everything that I've ever known and so um but I basically either had to change or I wasn't on the team. So it's kind of like, you know, pick your battle. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if that answered your question about float serving, but yeah, it's, it's been great for my body. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go to the first, or Faluka, sorry, do you have anything to add? No, that? I did not spin serve. You would not want to see me do that. <laughs> so I oh. missed the ball, so no. All right, let's go. First question will be Nate. All right, Nate asks, just curious, after working so hard this training block for the 2020 Olympics, what are your thoughts on Olympics being pushed 
Clearly it's out of your control, but surely there has to be some disappointment and a shift in mindset in terms of training. Uh, Luke, is that, is that you looking at me? My, well, my answer is different. different. Yeah. Different. Uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of had some plans post 2020. I kind of had life plans, you know, like starting a family is one of those things. And so obviously there was some disappointment, but honestly, I think from our team aspect, like just, we have some youth and uh, some elders uh, that we need to try and like combine together. And I think I'm actually just really thankful for this time because I feel like it's just giving us more time to prep. And I think it's going to be great for us. And I think we're going to look back on this time. And while it's hard and very challenging and not what we expected, I think it's going to turn into something bigger. And uh, I, I'm excited for that. And for some selfish reasons, I'm sad that the, my life events got postponed, but um, clearly there's a bigger plan and, purpo and purpose behind it all. And I'm just diving into that and falling into that. Yeah, um, agreed with Jordan, especially from the team aspect of having this time that we've been gifted to come even closer together and, and find out what our common goal as a team um, is. So we have that to work on. Individually, selfishly, I'm grateful for this extra time. I had my son Thanksgiving and um, developed diastasis from pregnancy, which is when um, the separation of your abdominal muscles. This is like a four and a half inch separation. So to have this extra time to rehab and get stronger, um, I would have, you know, tried my best and made it happen. It would have been a struggle, but um, I'm grateful for this extra time to reclaim my spot. Yeah, girl. All right, we've got a lot of people in the chat, a lot of participants in the Zoom. So I think it'll be too hard for Jez to shuffle through and try to find people. So we'll have Serena uh, read off the questions. So next okay. question is from Amber. Um, Amber wants to know if there's any pressure about being a famous player. Her words, her exact words. <laughs> Governor? Who's, who's famous? The governor's <laughs> famous. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, of course, right? Like they're, but that's kind of like what comes with the territory kind of thing. Like we get to play in front of these amazing crowds and, and get to play the sport that we love, but, um, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I think we're all trying to be who we are. And, um, at the end of the day, if people don't like it, you know, it's, it is what it is. So, um, but I don't know if there's really any pressure it's maybe if you put on yourself to be a certain level and what you have set for yourself but um yeah I don't know if that answered the question Luke? I wouldn't consider myself a famous player but um but uh yeah I think we all hold ourselves to a high standard and that would that's happening regardless so I think we just for me, I just focus on the game. I focus on my teammates and that is ultimately what's most important. So try and take all the rest of the noise out. And um, like Jordan said, just be true to myself of who I, who I am as a person, as an athlete. All right. And Faluka, you're a pretty good player, I would say, having been in like two Olympics and everything. Um, but were there times when you doubted yourself playing in tournaments? Yes. Yes. I think that's natural. I think we all have a little self-doubt from time to time, but um, I am a big believer that confidence is earned. And so in moments where I, there is self-doubt because that's natural and it creeps in, I remember that practice is where I'm able to gain that confidence. And so I know if I show up at practice and I give 100% and I do the work, that volleyball at the end of the day is pretty simple, right? It's, you know, like the blocking moves are repetitive. You know how to attack. You work on seeing the block. You work on serving and all these things that you put the work in at practice so that when the moments are big and that self-doubt creeps in, I can remind myself I've spent hours doing this simple skill and I know what I'm doing. And so, um, and so I can go back to that. And on top of that, I think it's important that we know as um, individuals what we need to get out of those moments. And so if I'm ever struggling, like Jordan is my person. And so I'll like look at her and be like, hey, like help me out. And she'll say, you got this, you know, like you're badass, you got this. And so 
and that helps me get out of it. And so I think we all just um, in moments need to know what you need. Everyone needs different things and know that, you know, the work that you put in in the front end is going to help you in those crucial situations. Anyone else want to add to that? Nope, she got it covered. Yep. Okay, Abigail wants to know if it's possible to play in college as a hitter if you're under six feet. Yes. Absolutely. What? No. I mean, so little story. I mean, Texas is known for having like gigantic hitters. Like Jarrett just loves recruiting gigantic hitters. But then, um, you know, when, whenever I was there, uh, my friend Amy, she was 5'9", and she was just like the glue to our team. Like she's the only outside that could play all the way around really well. She had a solid serve, both float and top. Like she, you need people, you know, ex yeah, Amy Neal, exactly. You just need people that can do all the things. And oftentimes those are people that are under six foot. So if they're over, that's great. You know, that adds, you know, a block and play and everything. But like, for sure, you could be five, five and just be able to read the game really well and, you know, provide solid ball control for your team. Definitely don't have to have a height requirement. Agreed. Scan on my face. Okay. Jordan, earlier you said talking is uncomfortable. So what way are you comfortable to communicate in? <sighs> That's, I, I had to yeah, kind of crack up that. Um, yeah, I would say like for me, like just being on the court and being able to like communicate strategy or um, like when something is off, like when we're playing, like if the standard isn't being met, like being able to like talk about it in that moment and being able to adjust in that moment. Um, but I would say that's probably the most I'm comfortable in and, and talking just volleyball. Like if I'm in a small group, like talking volleyball, um, I like it, but, uh, being in the spotlight is not, uh, not my forte. So, um, but I'm often put there sometimes like right now, I, this is uncomfortable. So, um, just trying to embrace that. That's me with the growth mindset being, being, <laughs> being okay in this situation. <laughs> Um, Amy Velasquez asked, how did you guys feel when you got the news that the Olympics were postponed? I know Jordan and Faluka, you guys kind of shared your part, but go for it, Molly. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm retired. Um, of course I was, so my career wasn't affected, but I was bummed like for my friends and you guys, like, you know, the, the date changes and you're like, obviously you had plans like you just like had the training plan you had every your, your goals set out like this has been in the works obviously for you know for four years and every single day is you know a step towards this date and to have it pushed back is of course just disappointing um but there are so many things to be thankful for right now i think that you know a lot of things get pushed back and i don't know you kind of have to look at the bigger picture and be like well, this is just life. Everybody's dealing with this. Everybody's going through a hard time and we'll train hard these next couple months and this next year and get back to it. But I'm really excited to cheer everybody on. Um, I know that the national team right now is in good hands and you guys are all putting in the work off the court, which is just as important. And if anything, like to cram the off the court stuff and the on the court stuff, like all together is difficult, you know? So to have this time just to kind of like, reevaluate and realign, I think is going to be beneficial for you guys. Okay. Um, did any of you guys ever feel like you wanted to quit volleyball? And I obviously know the answer, but I think the girls want to feel like they can relate to you in that way. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I thought I was going to retire after the 2012 Olympics. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, like I said, when I was 12, I wanted to be an Olympian and I made the team and I won a medal and, you know, everything was right there. And, uh, I thought it was it for me. I, I don't know, but something like just kept pulling me back. Like, I don't know. And I'm still here and, um, I'm thankful that I am. I think I, uh, I heard Faluka say this at one point, like I was put on this planet, God gave me these talents, like why like put them to waste? And um, 
use them to the full, full capacity. And obviously I still love the sport and I still love like figuring it out, right? It's, there's still much to learn and um, that's what's kind of kept me going. All right. Um, I will add to that. Okay. I'll give Go one more it. tidbit. <laughs> I, I talk to my mom about it all the time. So when I was, um, I think it was, a, it was 2004. I think I was a junior in high school. They had high school week. Jordan, did you know that high school week um, where they had Wait, yeah. you? Yeah, you left early and left <laughs> me. Well, we weren't even friends. So I don't know what you're talking about. But the point is, <laughs> it was high school week. And they took um, some of the high, like top high school players and we got to train with the women's national team, which was a really big deal. But they, they worked really hard. Obviously, the national team, just their warm up. I was like, all right, I'm good. Like, I'm good for the day. And then that was just their warm up. And so I remember telling my mom, like, I can't do this because volleyball is still relatively new to me. Like, I can't do this. All they do, they wake up, they like play volleyball, they like take a nap, they eat, they play some more volleyball, they like lift weights. It's just nonstop. I'm like, there's no way I'm ever going to do this. And so that's when I thought I wasn't going to play volleyball. And let's fast forward a couple decades and almost, and uh, I'm still doing it. So yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think like Jordan said, there is the passion there. I just, I love um, what I've come to learn is that I love the challenge of things and volleyball is very, very exceptionally challenging. And so it just keeps me um, coming back, so. Sorry, I'm gonna add something. I've stopped asking her life plan because it's like, I'm gonna retire, I'm gonna retire. And here she is with me. I'm so thankful though, so thankful. Yeah. Okay. Um, since we're all in quarantine right now, how are you guys staying healthy and exercising? Holly? Oh, um, you know, I just cook a lot. I also bake a lot. So um, it's the balance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just try to stay, if anything, I'm trying to stay mentally healthy. And that means, you know, walking my dog all the time and playing with him and then um, my fiance plays volleyball and so we're repping out some uh, pepper sessions in our patio and and then some beach volleyball but just pepper sessions and mind you we're both middles so it's you know pretty ugly but that's how I'm staying in shape. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, is team work and team bonding different when you started playing professionally? Team work and team bonding. Um, well, like, of course, like team bonding changes, like in college, you're with the team for four to five years, and then you go overseas or you're with the national team. Um, and like your team is constantly changing and you have people from all over the world who, you know, just have different ways of bonding with people. And, and that's always fun to navigate and really cool that everybody has different methods of becoming a team. Um, but I think that's the most different part is that you're constantly adjusting to different people. And then, Honestly, sometimes only one person changes on the team and the whole team dynamic changes. So, you know, I've done like team obstacle courses where we're like literally lifting each other. And then we also do like, I don't know, team meditations, you know, there's different things that teams do and it's all just a way to bond. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big advocate of team bonding, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, question for Jordan. You've been in a lot of tournaments, so I thought this was best. How easy, hard, slash hard was it to bounce back from a horrible loss or an off day? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely challenging. Um, for example, I think in 2016 when we lost the semifinal, I think that was probably one of the most challenging to come back from. Um, we had put in a lot of work, not just off the uh, – on the court, but off the court, um, we just had a great group of people and uh, we had bought into something that was bigger than us and it was really something special. And um, I think each and every one of us, I'm getting chills thinking about like really truly believe that we were gonna win a gold medal and with every ounce of our body and we were gonna do everything we could to get there. And uh, we were two points short in that semifinal match and uh but Serbia played phenomenal and to come home and we had a meeting and we sat around and I don't know 
let it all out and just let out the emotion. And uh, it was hard. Um, but what a lot of people don't tell you is that they, they don't give away the bronze medal. You have to go out there and earn it, you know? And I think for us to be able to come together in that moment, like kind of get our, all of our emotion out and just kind of flush it in a sense, like, okay, like this loss stinks. Like let's sit in it for tonight. But as soon as the sun comes up tomorrow, it's a new day and we're on to the next match. And so I think, um, while it was challenging, um, the sun did come up and we were eventually able to walk away with the bronze medal. Um, and it meant way more to me that medal than winning a silver medal in 2012. Um, I sh yeah, uh, it just holds a special place in my heart because of just the way we did it. And even though we didn't win it all, uh, we won it all. We won the bronze medal all together. And so I think uh, that's how I would frame that. Awesome. And how did you kind of take that loss and kind of tie it into um, like the importance of like a growth mindset? Like how does a growth mindset like work in that situation? Yeah. I mean, I think just being open again, like we're, we hadn't solved all the problems. We, we didn't crack the code of like trying to win that match, you know? So like clearly we don't know everything. And I think just being open to, like feedback from our coaches. Okay, what did we do? Uh, like, obviously we played Netherlands that next match in the bronze medal match. Okay, what did we do against uh, Netherlands the time before that, you know, maybe we're gonna have to do differently this, this time. And so being able to use that uh, to our advantage moving forward, but not being content and staying in that negative, negative place, uh, but trying to expand and, and grow from there. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question. No, it does. That's, that's a pretty good answer. All right. And uh, last two questions. Alhana wants to ask, how do you guys deal with the stress that comes with playing at a high level? Yeah. Molly, do you want to take this one? How do we, yeah, sure. How do we deal with the stress? Yeah, like of playing at a really high level. Um, it's a good question, Alana. Um, I think that, like, I'm going to touch on what Jordan said earlier is that like you kind of you shouldn't really let yourself like see the bigger picture of like everybody's watching me you know what I mean like you know people expect this of me and per this person has this goal for me um I think like putting everything you have into your team and like your discipline I think kind of like melts away the rest of that stress of course it's going to still arrive you know like you know first first point of the game, like it's still going to arrive and you're still going to have jitters. Um, but that's where like the team aspect comes to this, you know, like the moments, my worst games is whenever I paid attention to things like that. I paid attention to only myself. Oh my gosh. Hi. Wow. I can't really answer the question anymore. Uh, <laughs> Beluga, but, do yeah. you want to do a little introduction after this question? Uh -huh. sure, I'm done. <laughs> I'll answer the question and then. He's smiling. Look at him. Oh, I do. Oh my me. gosh. Hi. Um, but I think in in that too. I think I caught the end of the question, but um, in high pressure situations or like being, what was the question exactly? Uh, how do you deal with the stress of playing at a high level? I think honestly, it's knowing that you're more than just a volleyball player, right? Like. It's, it's more than that. And we have other aspects of our lives. And so at the end of the day, like if we fail, quote, quote, on the court, I mean, doesn't mean we're fail failures at life. And I think that's something that I have to remind myself time and time again, because I think it's natural to get caught up on being the best at your craft. But knowing that if you don't quite get there, it's okay, because you're more than just a volleyball player. And this is my son, Kaede. And he's five Hi, months old. <laughs> All right. So we'll go last, last question will be Henry. Um, Henry, Jez, can you unmute Henry? Henry's got a real cerebral question about the league, so I'll let him ask it. Hi. Um, so you guys have all spoken to the importance of inner team dynamics. So I'm wondering 
with the new AU format, it's going to come with its own inherent new challenges, like people getting upset because you didn't give me enough opportunities to score individual points. Like, how do you foresee that you're going to handle situations like that if they come up on your team? That's an interesting question and something that we are currently trying to discuss and have tried to discuss. Um, but I think it, it is going to be a, a different challenge and something we have never really experienced. Right. But also when we get on some of these club teams um, for long months, right, we're dealing with these issues like for a really long time where, you know, if you're kind of changing teams every week, it's kind of a new challenge every week. So there is some like newness to it. But but remember, we're all actually training like as a big group. So we have 48 players and we're all training together and then we break up and then we'll come back together again. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I'd answer that. I mean, do you guys have anything else? I, just want to say, I think at the end of the day, though, because it's all about bonus points, but the most points you score is based on set wins. So even though there are individual points that come with it, um, winning as a team is ultimately the most important so but like Jordan said we're still working that out yeah. all right well thank you guys so much uh Luca you got a you know newborn baby five-month-old baby Jordan you got a sick sick bulldog so thank you for taking the time well you're awesome um Serena thanks for helping out one last thing is there a website or is there an Instagram that they can go and and get more information on this and would you mind typing that in the chat yeah, I can type it. Yeah. And then any idea on the location? Where, where are they going to games be played or where are you guys going to be housed for this? It's or... not, we're still working on it. It's not um, official yet. Yeah, soon, soon. It'll come out soon. Okay, so Molly, so that's the Instagram where they can find out more info and follow AU? Yes, yeah. Alrighty, thank you guys. Uh, could I have one request? Sorry. Could I do could I do one picture really fast? Sure. So can you put it on the gallery? All right, everybody smile big. Wait. You have to okay. go through five pages though. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, perfect. One more. We'll go to the next page. All right. One, two, three. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Oh. Everybody's off on the other side. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bye. No Bye.